Oh! My house may be completely in ruin, and we may have been reduced down to a lowly count living in a field, but at least we have Maximini, who at the age of only 15, stands to be the greatest diplomat of an age. How uh, would you like to go swimming later, my own alier? Sure thing, Papa. That sounds like so much fun. No. No. Maximini Typinius. You what? Too good for this world. <laughs> Too good. And having never met his second daughter, Armenia, there was no hope for the dynasty, no hope for Maximus. Va, va, fucking hell, va, my dynasty is ruined, whatever will he do? How about me? Say no more. And with that, the dynasty was saved, and they all lived happily ever after. Once more, Euphemia becomes your lover. Is this the desperation Maximus has gone to? To get himself a child. The only problem, I think, is that she was 40... She's 47, so we can't get an heir. And also, she's dead? <laughs> and the peculiar thing is this, my friends. The woman he loved on that fateful night was dead all along. Maybe madness, grief, or pleasure. Hmm... Regardless of the truth, we have to rebuild a broken dynasty with a very broken man. Maybe, before we start work on the dynasty, a bath, given the whole accidental necrophilia incident. And apparently the sweaty stench? I don't think sweaty stench begins to cover it, game. Sorry, Maximus, you wouldn't know anything about that corpse smell, would you? Corpses? Do like corpses? Who said anything about corpses? It's not all bad. On the plus side, our wife is 15. <laughs> No, 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 that's not, that's not what it sounds like. On the plus side, our betrothed, soon to be married, is 15. So it's all above board and very morally okay. That means potentially within the year, we can, we can work on an heir. Friendship ended with mountains and mountains of gold. Big Diddler is my new best friend. Oh, sweet vengeance. The twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage, and that's... Very much understating it. King Boris, rival of Count Maximus, the man who shamed him in a duel and took his titles, is dead. Not one day too soon. A tiny bit of stress relief, but given the corpse incident, I feel like he's already had enough of that recently. A realm. The throne is split. Wallachia and Bulgaria are two separate kingdoms. Well, if we weren't in trouble before, we're now surrounded on every single side by enemies. <laughs> King Simeon, to our south, the man whose father we kind of rebel against. He hates us because we're disgraceful. And to be honest, I can't argue with him. Our neighbor to the east hates us because we, well, tried to take her father's land too. So it's in a theme here. And to our west, a man whose titles we are in the process of stealing. Now, if there's one thing Maximus will always have, that's his martial ability, his cunning and strength on the battlefield. All those other previous times notwithstanding. We have a claim on the county of Caliphate, our neighbor. And they have 505 troops. I think the glorious armies of the Roman Summer House, <laughs> which really doesn't sound that threatening when you put it like that, led by Maximus in a redemption arc, could potentially take a castle for us. And given that right now we are genuinely living in a longhouse in a field, that's a pretty sizable upgrade. Maximus, your fortunes are beginning to change, Maximus. The King of Wallachia is offering us position of Marshal of Wallachia. That does most likely mean we're going to die in a war with Bulgaria, but I mean, the wages are good. Oh, peasants. Once your coffers dry up and your larders are empty, you will wish you had treated us more fairly. Never. A peasant's lot is to serve their lord. How many are there though? Because this, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> we are outnumbered, but we have a secret weapon. Maximus himself taking to the front lines for the first time since his disgraceful defeat at the start of the campaign. And to really prove to them that we're not the tyrant they make us out to be, fully armored and trained, Maximus is gonna go and duel a peasant man. <laughs> he doesn't even have an arm. Oh, this is not gonna end well. This is terrible for our image. Brave Sir Maximus will attack Theomir.
I whirl my mates with deadly flourish, weaving a song of pain across my opponent with every blow. I am victorious. Who could have possibly guessed that a trained warrior might have defeated a man wearing rags without an arm? Would Maximus give in to his madness? Or should we do the prestigious and expected thing of a leader and gain the prestige? Your knights gain a good opinion of you. We gain Knightmaster. Maximus, this is your redemption art, my friend. You sent Theomir to his grave. And through that, victory. Well, Maximus didn't escape unharmed, though. Another scar for the collection. At this rate, there's not going to be anything left of the poor guy. <laughs> oh, an opportunity. Because we finally brought back a small chunk of honor to our dynasty. We have the opportunity now to adopt feudal ways. It will cost us a fair chunk of the prestige we've earned back. But I think it's worth it. The old ways have served us well and we will always honor them. However, as the Count of Maximus Minor Minor, I'm concluded we must adopt feudalism and its principles if we are to continue to prosper. <laughs> yeah, good one. I'll be sure to let you all know when the prospering begins. <laughs> Anytime now. And now the war is over and the dust is settled. We can marry the daughter of the Duke of Busalaria. And there we have it. With all of the bonuses of prestige that comes from marrying into a duke's family. And not to mention the potential to save this dynasty. We gained a level of fame. He's known for something. Congratulations, you're known for marrying someone else's daughter. And if I'm not mistaken, because we've now reclaimed our position in feudal society, we should be able to press our claims on the adjacent title. They are vastly inferior to us. War were declared. The siege of Caliphate begins led by none other than Maximus himself. And it is a quick victory. Because despite all else, he will always have his martial skills to fall back on. Cowards! Come back here. Lead the Centurions, Maximus. Bring us a victory. We need this. This would be huge. Victory! We've done it. 459 survivors versus six. A decisive victory. And there it is. Caliphate. In honor of those who came before... We will rename this to Maximini. Finally, with a victory under his belt, the demons quell. Unless there isn't a babby form soon, otherwise the demons, they might return. Oh, he'll do it all right. He'll fuck another corpse. <laughs> all those cold, lonely nights away during his campaign has given him ample opportunity to research enticement of the of the living, hopefully. I mean, how could you say no to a face like that? The time has come to let my feelings towards Countess Messalina be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life, which at the rate he's going will be all of about a month. There's only one thing to do. Sing her a love ballad. <laughs> I find my honeycomb walking in the Roman summer garden, surrounded by her friends. With my heart beating like a hammer, I kneel before her and sing. La 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 la. You have a beautiful voice, my lord. Messalina says before she hurries off. Her friends are quick to follow. I stand upon shaking legs, watching them disappear between the hedges. My heart beating harder than ever. Messalina won't resist my charms for long. By Rod! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I have no idea who Rod is. Countess Messalina is an insufferable witch. Have you seen how she averts her eyes? Ridiculous. My centurion Lucian throws his head back with a wicked laugh. Messalina is still conversing with her friends, but I can hear tell her. <laughs> Messalina is still conversing with her friends, but I can tell she heard him. I hate to see her hurt. Vile lies. Draw your sword, coward. Lucian draws his sword with a cocky grin. When I'm done with him, Lucian's humiliation is absolute. Bruised and blushing, he croaks out an apology and limps away to lick his wounds. You're a true hero, Count Maximus. You have the eternal gratitude. Lady Messalina, let me prove my devotion to you in any way you deem fit. Bring me a goblet of your bath water and a straw. It turns out all that bath water paid off and it's put him in quite the mood. Lock up your daughters, people of Maximus Minor Minor. Well, and your mausoleums. Every time I close my eyes, I see Countess Messalina's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaked in shadow. I make my way to Count Maximus's castle. Our, our castle, it's our home. The sight of Messalina's chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close, yet so far. <gasps> but wait, who is that climbing up the tower? The shady figure stops by Messalina's window and unlatches the shutters. My rose is in danger, I must save her. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I've ever known. Without care for life or limb. 
I mean, you haven't cared about that before. I hoist myself through Countess Messalina's window. I feel as if I have plunged into a frozen lake. Messalina is on the floor with the intruder pressing her down, a gleaming blade between them. With a roar. <laughs> I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Messalina, are you alright? I ask cautiously as if my words were a spell. She finally unfreezes and throws herself into my arms. Thank Jupiter you're here, Maximus. I'll never let you get into harm's way again. Countess Messalina becomes your soulmate. And you lay with Countess Messalina, body on the floor. Then again, maybe it can join in. Your glory is widely known. I'd prefer if it wasn't. <laughs> oh, look at how happy he is now. Could it be? After all this time, Maximus gets a happy ending. Your wife, Countess Messalina, is bearing your child. A nickname? Count Maximus the Marked of Maximus Minor Minor. <laughs> Please don't make me ever say that again. No. No. Just let him have something. When the midwife finally exits the birth chamber with a softly crying bundle in her arms, relief washes over me. Then I see the look on her face. I am so sorry, my lord. Lady Messalina. Words fail her, but the tone of her voice says it all. One life has been extinguished, but a new one has just begun. I must stay strong for my son. <laughs> Such tragic beginnings. Theo Charistos, in honor of your mother, you will be known as Maxim Messalinus. And it'll annoy me for the rest of this campaign. <laughs> stay strong, Maximus. Stay strong for Maxim Messalini. 51 years of age, battle scarred and maimed, and left raising a newborn child by himself. But Maximus is a diligent man. He knows he can't give up. He knows he has to work hard. So maybe it's time to find a another new wife <laughs> to help him raise his child. And immediately, a princess of Lotharingia. She seems very eager, to be honest. <laughs> oh, a carling? If it wasn't bad enough, he lost his wife and soulmate. I'm making him marry a carling. On the plus side, we do gain an alliance with this tiny troll. Don't worry, Maximus. The bishop, he's got another claim. More land for your brand new son and heir. And we can get the ecumenical patriarch to pay for it. Greetings, Count Maximus of Maximus Minor Minor. I've considered your plight. And it's a horrible story, so take some gold. Another perk for intrigue. Is it even worth it anymore? Maybe. Maybe, just maybe, there's an alternate route to a little bit of stress relief. <laughs> and the best part, or worst part, is that this isn't even close to the worst thing he's ever done. Now, if there's a man who knows anything about leading a family through its ups and downs and downs and more downs, I think it's Maximus, a man well-suited to becoming a family hierarch. She's, she's actually kind of scary, just kind of kind of standing there menacingly. The prisoner's lips are sealed tighter than I expected. After a long night of questioning, the jailer's frustration takes the better of him and the two courtiers are dead by morning, but not before they reveal their secret. Well, off oh, to an incredible start, I think. Oh my God, she's pregnant. Princess Helinda is pregnant. That was so easy. But, but hang on. She is a carling. Maybe this is another child we need to arrange some swimming lessons for. No. No! You can't have a half Carlin girl called Cesaris. Much better. Of course, we would never call her anything quite so crass. I've gone for Germanicus, Bomble, and Typhinius. And she's also quick? Oh, damn it. Now, before we commit ourselves fully to the education of young Maxa. Maximara. Maxa. Maximus Salinus, we'll take advantage of these few quiet years. And have a look at the war situation. Well, tragically, Maximus might have to forego his claim on the Council of Severin. They seem to have picked up one or two troops from somewhere. The Duke of Transylvania, you fucking vampire. What about our old title and Maximus Minor? They're inferior to us. And we could take the entire Duchy of Montenia? How can I not do this? We can take back the new old new Senate, her old capital. Which at this point is still tribal, so... <laughs> There's not much point in taking it back, unfortunately. To gain an heir and to become a duke? Maximus is owed this much. War were declared. Oh, their troops are directly adjacent to us. This will be a battle for the history books. 
A count. Count Gostin searched under Duchess Dana's command. Well, that went just about as well as all of our jewels have gone, to be honest with you. And with his siege tactics, the capital is ours. I'm his son. It's time to be educated. There is no end to the opinions and wants of my son and heir, Maxim Messal... Mess... Fuck. Maxim Messalinus. Half of the time, he is trying to tell me what to do instead of the other way around. He gains the trait bossy. He can make a great commander. Fine. Follow in your father's footsteps. The king died. The king of Wallachia is dead. Died from internal injuries. Hang on a second. Now it is King Boris II, our grandson. He might not be of our dynasty, but that's a powerful ally to have. Greetings, grandfather. He's already fallen to the nepotism. It's been five minutes. <laughs> Steward of the kingdom of Wallachia. Of course, of course. Of course. Oh, they've fallen right into the trap. Count Gostin. I am the fastest blade in Maximus Minor Minor, Count Gostin. Oh! Not again. You really need to stop trying to fight this guy. But with 245 losses, it's irrelevant. The war is done. Everything we worked so hard for is returned to us. Greetings, Duke Maximus of Montenia. Yes! You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Look at us now. Montenia. Gigantic. And the kingdom of Wallachia is huge. And remind me, who is the king of Wallachia? Our grandson. Oh, Maximus. Everybody doubted you, Maximus. But through it all, he's back. And that would do for our adventures for Maximus for today. It's been the fucking roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> From nothing, to heartbreak, to a son at long last, and then to ascend to Duke with his grandson positioned in the most powerful position in the realm. I think we can safely say we've bounced back. I'm very excited to see where we can go from here because this is a good position we're in. We've just got to consolidate what we picked up and make sure our air gets something, something to work with in terms of skills. And who knows? Maybe we can position ourselves to become the king of Wallachia. Thank you all for joining Maximus on his adventures. We'll return in a few days to catch up with him and see what's going on. If my blood pressure can handle it, to be completely honest with you. Thank you, as always, of course, to the patrons who allow me to spend many hours a day recording many content over many channels. A big thank you to Falcon Alaris, Boop, Solothol, Voodoo Mumbo, Alex, Kate, Summoth, Crow Skull, Mad Marl, Rage Dragon, Gibbering Mound, Blood Snakes Chaos, and Avion Prime for their support at the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for making the adventures of Maximus all possible in the first place. And a thank you as well goes out to Muskratful, Smirtworm, Tofu10, to Snarf, Huntsman, Roger Wilco, Sendy, Larry, the Emu, KG Evans, and Kato as well. See you all in a few days.